Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome to Monday's edition of Just Calvin, learning MMT through a cloudy lens. Um, well, first of all, I want to show you the new merch I got. Uh, you can go on to uh, Teesprings, look up uh, this, or you can go to uh, this uh, little uh, thing here and uh, purchase this for... I believe it's twenty six ninety nine, or you can go to Afterpay and do six eighty five um, installments. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that. <laughs> do a little braggadocious thing. Uh, first of all, I saw that uh, Goldman Sachs uh, uh, says that they predict a recession. I think they said recession. Let me just kind of double check that because I've kind of been wrong about that. This is the one here. Yeah, there's a 35% chance of recession within 24 months. Well, given the fact that overall controls the <clears throat> stuff at that time, if there's a 35% chance of recession, you know that they're going to make sure there is an actual recession by the policies that they uh, lobby to get voted on. So um, it's Goldman Sachs who are in this country. Capitalism works. Um, anyway, come over here because the Federal Reserve embarks here. Goldman Sachs, <clears throat> uh, our episodes suggest that although strong economic momentum limits the risk uh, in the near term the policy uh, tightening we expect raising raises the odds of recession as a result we now see the odds of recession as roughly 15 percent in the next 12 months or 35 in the next 24 months now given the fact that if you look at who uh, owns the most uh, u.s treasuries uh, it's the u.s government so if there is a uh, net interest payer that means that it's more or less a uh, economic expansion because those interest rates are going on top of the U.S. Treasury that are owned by the U.S. in regards to uh, owning those same Treasury bonds. So it's it's not tiny per se. It's uh, making it harder for non-governments uh, to take out loans, like you know car loans, housing loans. <coughs> Excuse me, <laughs> yeah, I'm throwing uh, uh, out. I saw also that earlier. Uh, it's kind of that when you know, the, as far as outrights on houses or stuff of that nature, yes, of course, I can see how the, the uh, housing market would be slowing down because the majority of them have been purchased, again, as I said, above market value uh, by, you name it, BlackRock, Blackstone, or even their subsidiaries. They've come in and they have offered above uh, above market value for houses that are probably below market value as far as what they were actually on the market for in the first place. But that uh, when they buy a house that's above market value, um, one, they actually make the rents in the area um, go up because when you buy some, if you buy a piece of property in the area that is above at, at above market value. You can actually uh, push other houses, housing in the area up. Um, that's the fact that a lot of people may or may not have jobs to support themselves and support rent workers or whatever else. Those same companies will then eventually come in and buy them an auction or pay the owner of said property straight out. So you're having multiple um, 
buyers, but they're crowding out the those first time buyers, those people who don't have that kind of budget. That's what happens in this in this type of a, a financial environment. Anyway, so <clears throat> yeah, let's see. Uh, duh, duh. 12 months, 35 percent within the next 24 months. Uh, 11 out of 14 straight tightening cycles since World War II have been followed by recession within two years. Uh, Warren's Hadzius, I'm not even sure that's how you pronounce it. Excuse me if I got that wrong. Adding Hadzius, taking it at face value with these historic patterns, suggests the Fed faced a narrow path to a soft landing as it aims to close the jobs workers gap and bring inflation back towards its uh, 20, per, uh, not 20, I'm sorry, 2% target. Let's see. Uh, earlier this month, the Deutsche Bank recession, as you call it, as soaring prices, there's a reason why. Uh, when the CPI, if it says not seasonally adjusted, that usually means that when it's seasonally adjusted, it's downloaded because during the winter, energy energy prices go up because demand for energy goes up. During the summer, that kind of stuff goes down. Electricity may go up because of you know everything from air conditioners or, or fans or whatever else. So so those two fluctuate depending on time of year. At least that's how I perceive it. Perceive me to run deal with I two percent creator. Uh, send jobs overseas, stuff of that nature. Anyway. Access another thing. Now, now, I've been saying for the past months that since the pandemic started, everything got shut down. Uh, restaurants weren't open. In fact, a lot of restaurants had to close. Uh, a lot of small-time restaurants were trying to get PPPs, but were unable to due to uh, um, weren't able to understand money with you. The free money, uh, export a lot of money that was supposed to go to small time businesses to stay open and keep their employees on the payroll from being able to do that. So a lot of them had to, so a lot of them, um, either closed with no, uh, with no back credits. So we had enough money on hand to be able to pay employees or pay for back, you know, back, you know, um, back bills basically, and then close out. Uh, some did file for bankruptcy. If you look up uh, how many uh, corporations, uh, we'll see the districts anyway, no, they don't uh, tighten the adequate economy. So the Fed is, on, is going to be in a very difficult place a year from now as inflation still remains high and it starts to pinch on both the markets and the economy. Another thing that's pinching people's pockets is the fact that the tariffs that are still in place, the, uh, the, China, the, uh, the tariffs on China, the tariffs on Russia, well, Russia and other places like that. Uh, when you are bringing, when you are bringing supplies in from those countries, the paying or you're currently paying at the at the case, the wheat products or the wheat um, inventory of the world, and a lot of stuff that we that, that we consume here have wheat in some form. So that's going to create a lot of shit as far as as far as uh, the food market here. Same thing with uh, cattle, uh, cattle feed, cattle themselves. Now the things involved in that, uh, since since the tariffs went went in place, the tax cuts went in place. You name it. The only people that are making dough is the bigger corporations, bank, actually are consumer base. Uh, but I those groceries really have to just government. A government will have to eventually do without stimulus in order for us all to be able to sustain ourselves. For right now, I don't see that happening because of the idiots in office. <clears throat> anyway, I'm kind of going on a long tangent there. Let's see. Anyway, so thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you learned something. I hope my tangent and um, then you know, uh, go on the wrong side of you as far as the part goes, but please subscribe to this channel and uh, look for me tomorrow on Facebook through Real Progressives. I'll be uh, at the protest. That will be downtown Columbus. Um, a Jewish organization is uh, is protesting uh, Chase Bank um, for funding uh, gas and oil drilling and other things like that. So, uh, stay tuned for that. That will uh, I will be live on Facebook at 12 noon uh, tomorrow. Hopefully, it's not raining too bad. Uh, I'm going to try to make a some cover with me. But anyway, uh, see. Let me try to stop the share part here.
one. <laughs> there we go. And again, uh, as you see, there's a uh, lot of pieces of merchandise here. Go to the go to my Teespring account, as you saw earlier in the video, and uh, please um, look at it and see if you see if it's something you will want yet. Either way, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe to this channel, and later on, uh, something new will be on my Substack. So, stay tuned for that. Peace out for now.